Hello, welcome to this presentation by FERN, the Foundation for the Education and Research in Neurological Emergencies. This educational lecture is titled, The Evaluation of Emergency Department Dizziness Patients, New Concepts. My name is Edward Sloan. I am currently Medical Director of the Physician Assistance Studies Program at Dominican University. I have most recently been an attending physician at Carl Foundation Hospital, and I am Professor Emeritus in the Department of Emergency Medicine at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Support for the development of this lecture was provided by EB Medicine. I am currently President and Board Chair of FERN. The content for this lecture comes in large part by the monograph titled The Timing and Triggers Approach to the Patient with Acute Dizziness by Jonathan Edlow. It was published in Emergency Medicine Practice by EB Medicine, December 2019. Other parts of this educational lecture and the complete lecture are available at the Fern.org website or on our YouTube Fern.org channel. Also available is the June 2020 podcast, which was presented to participants in 46 countries, as well as a CME option on the EB Medicine website at ebmedicine.net, as well as at the specific website address noted below. Please note the disclaimer listed below. In general, this information is intended to augment and not replace the clinical judgment that guides the management of any individual patient. So again, in acute vestibular syndrome, let's look at our electronic medical record statements. We have five different findings that are in the red rectangle in the clinical pathway. So our five questions. Is there central pattern nystagmus? You can say in the medical record, vertical, rotational, pure lateral with no stimulation, or lateral nystagmus that changes direction with gaze. All of these are not found. Is there skew deviation? You can say there is no vertical skew deviation. Is the hit test negative or not okay? You can say there is the presence of a unilateral correcting fast saccade on one side, which is good, positive, suggesting a peripheral labyrinthine etiology. You can say, are there CNS signs on neuro exam? There are no CNS neuro exams, which suggest posterior ischemic stroke. And you can ask, is the patient able to sit and walk assisted? You can say, the patient is able to sit and walk unassisted. So our five statements, no central pattern nystagmus findings are seen. No vertical skew deviation is observed. A positive, which is good, unilateral corrective hit exam is seen, which suggests peripheral etiology. There are no stroke CNS signs on neurological exam. And the patient is able to sit and walk unassisted. These findings allow the diagnosis of vestibular neuritis or labyrinthitis to be made in this patient with acute vestibular syndrome as posterior stroke is reasonably excluded. This is such a powerful list of statements that can be put into a dot phrase with every patient who presents with dizziness and acute vestibular syndrome. In conclusion, the ATTEST system for the evaluation of the dizzy patient includes the following. A, associated symptoms. T, T, timing and triggers. ES, examination signs, and T, confirmatory testing, a test. When evaluating an ED patient with dizziness, please consider the following. Using the ATTEST system for evaluating ED dizzy patients, those patients with acute, severe, continuous symptoms should be considered to have acute vestibular syndrome. Patients who have intermittent symptoms or non-continuous symptoms at the time of evaluation are noted to either have triggered or spontaneous episodes of dizziness and vertigo. Topping the list of diagnoses using the ATTEST system are orthostasis, BPPV or benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, and posterior stroke. BPPV can be diagnosed with the Dix-Hallpike maneuver 
and can be treated with the Epley maneuver either in the emergency department or in follow-up. It is noted that you should evaluate patients with caution in the setting of the COVID-19 pandemic as the COVID virus can cause neurological symptoms and or can complicate those neurological symptoms because of poor PO intake and dehydration, which can cause orthostasis. Electronic medical record templates and dot phrases can help to make the exam process more systematic and easily accomplished using the ATTEST system. When evaluating dizziness patients in the emergency department, the following is recommended. Understand that the dizziness pathologies using the ATTEST system fall into three diagnostic strata and basically involve six diagnoses and three specific treatments for those diagnoses. Also recommended is that you study the nystagmus findings, significance, and BPPV maneuvers, Hall, Pike, and Epley, online and in the monograph from which this lecture was obtained. Also, create EMR templates and dot phrases to exclude posterior stroke findings in your dizzy patients in the emergency department. Explain the etiology of the dizziness, including the diagnosis and treatment, and provide appropriate referral for patients with dizziness, explaining to them symptoms which should cause them to come back to the emergency department for repeat evaluation. Lastly, Utilize caution when evaluating dizziness patients in the emergency department in the setting of COVID-19, as this virus has both neurological complications and symptoms and can cause orthostasis due to decreased PO intake. If you have specific questions related to this educational content, please send an email to fern.org at gmail.com. We encourage you to go to the fern.org website for more content related to this educational program and other content related to the care of patients who present to the emergency department with acute illness and injury related to neurological emergencies. Thank you for your participation in this Fern educational program.